Gothard. Here. Thompson. Here. Festerson. Here. Gurnett. Here. Gray. Yes. Mr. President. Here. Uh, please stand for our Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for our invocation by Council Member Chris Jerome. Pledge of Allegiance, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, it's uh, this time of Easter, and um, I just thought maybe a good reflection in this time of uh, recognizing forgiveness and healing and rebirth. And some people, like in Catholic Church, celebrated their baptism again. Uh, that we try to each think of somebody who maybe did something wrong to us or hurt us in some way that we carry a, a grudge uh, about kind of anger or disappointment and maybe choose to seek out a way to, to forgive that person and move on. Amen. City Clerk certified publication date daily record on April 13th notice for a pre-council and regular city council meeting April 17th, 2012. A current copy of the open meetings act is posted in a white binder on the East Fall Legislative Chambers. Good afternoon and welcome. This Omaha City Council meeting is conducted in public and may, by law may only address the topics listed on the published agenda. The council will hear testimony, but it will not engage in debate of issues with the public at this meeting. During testimony, it is not appropriate to applaud or convey disapproval. These actions only detract from the formal decorum of the meeting. At this time, please turn off or mute any electronic device. Mr. Clerk. We'll take items five and six together. Item five is ordinance to rezone property located at 13208 Meredith Avenue from DR to R5 Urban Family Residential District. A Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. And six is a resolution of special use permit application to allow assisted living in an R5 Urban Family Residential District located at 13208 Meredith Avenue is hereby approved. A Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing on agenda item number five and six begin now. Are there any proponents? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President, members of the council. Jeff Lake, uh, 2111 South 67th Street, uh, Suite 200, on behalf of the applicant Lenity Group. Uh, be happy to answer any questions you might have on the submittal or the project in general. Thank you, sir. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. <coughs> Passed 7 to 0. Pursuant to City Council Rule 70, agenda item number 7. Are we having trouble with our tape? We'll have a momentary delay here before we try and figure out why it's not recording. Technical difficulty. Amen. Can we include that in our prayer, Mr. President? <laughs> Divine intervention. <laughs> Electronic. I can hum. <laughs> yes. They say that's good for your sinuses. Hum. <laughs> Turn that on John Tesh. <laughs> Making maybe Ben could do the uh, last episode of Kaleidoscope. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Good, 
That's what I said, me and Jim were straightening the net. <laughs> 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 oh, I remember that show. Point, counterpoint. Here he comes. Yeah. He's right behind us. Yeah. <laughs> Your temperamental machine is not recording. I, I, I love how they were. And bringing the 18. Yeah, we're, oh. this is serious now. I hope it wasn't anything I said. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. It's <laughs> probably what I said. Anybody know shorthand? What? Anybody know shorthand? Take it verbatim. Uh, Pre sign. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. I can take it, I just can't read it. Any <laughs> scribes? They tape it for us also, so we have a second one. So, but we can't use that right away to do the journal. That's the issue. What do you do for this For those that are. Is it working? Okay, we're going. Okay. Uh, pursuant to City Council Rule 7. E, agenda item number seven shall be laid over two weeks for publication and public hearing. Item number eight, resolution special use permit application for a, to allow automotive sales in a general commercial district located at 3824 North 30th Street is hereby approved. A planning board and planning department recommend denial. The uh, public hearing on agenda item number eight was held on February the 28th, 2012. Uh, Mr. President, if you don't mind, um, what I would like to do is make a motion to deny, and I've already talked to the uh, I've already talked to the applicant, and he's going to reapply later once we've had a couple of conversations with um, with uh, the adjacent neighbors to see what we can work out. So, my motion would be to deny. Not adopt. We have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call. Jerem. Yes. Stothard. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Garnett. Yes. Gray. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. It's uh, not adopted on a 7-0 vote. The liquor, item number 10, Red Robin American Gourmets Burgers and Spirits, 2627 South 180th Street. Request permission to my Susan Brown manager. Public hearing on agenda item number 10 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? She's here. <coughs> Just state your name and address. Uh, my name is Suzanne Brown, and the address is 2627 South 180th Street. I'm, I'm going to assume you are a proponent, correct? Yes. <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> no, I don't want to be. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Jerem, yes. Stothard, yes. Thompson, yes. Festerson, yes. Garnett, yes. Gray, yes. Mr. President. Yes. It's adopted seven. To zero. Item number 11, uh, Sullivan Steakhouse, 222 South 15th Street. Request permission to appoint Joseph Stevens manager, or John Stevens manager, I'm sorry. Public hearing on agenda item number 11 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Jerem, yes. Stothard, yes. Thompson, yes. Festerson, yes. Garnett. Yes. Gray? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Approved 
seven to zero. Item number 12, the welcome in, 2332 South 24th Street. Request permission for a special designated license for a dance beer garden on April 21st from 12 till 2 a.m. with music ending at midnight. Public we'll carrying on agenda item number 12 begins an hour. Are there any proponents? Yes, Jeff Kohler, uh, representing the Welcome In Tavern. Uh, answer any of your questions. Uh, 2332 South 24th Street. Thank you. Minute. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Jeff. Public hearing is closed. Mr. Grenant. Uh, Mr. McCuller, don't leave yet. Jeff. Jeff. We haven't voted yet. Come on back. <laughs> Step to your right a little bit, get on the microphone. There you go. Um, I know that you've made in the past every effort to contact uh, neighbors that may have some concerns in regards to your your operation there. Uh, have you done that with this particular event that's coming up? Not really. We, we've had so many events, it's just kind of a natural thing. The neighbors really don't give us any uh, problem except for one, maybe. And that's probably why I'm bringing this up, because yeah. you know my phone will ring. You and I have had this conversation before. Um, I know that uh, you will continue to do everything that you can as far as uh, the, the noise level and the uh, security and traffic in and out. Is that is that? Always accurate? do, yeah. Okay. And then I would make, uh, I, again, I would like to say for what you do and the operation that you have there, you've got a great neighborhood bar. Uh, I know that you're on a main thoroughfare and uh, the traffic that probably goes in and out of your establishment probably doesn't even uh, equal to what goes up and down 24th Street. Yeah, on you a just never know what's going to walk in the door, you know, so, on 24th Street. Keep so. up the good work, if you would, and uh, we'll, we'll continue to work on uh, with, with that one neighbor. Okay. Right on. Uh, motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Gurnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Approved 7 to 0. Thank you. Item number 13, Halo's Ultimate Lounge, 17525 Gold Plaza. Request permission for a special Disney license for a beer garden on May 27th, 4 p.m. till midnight. Music will end at midnight. Public hearing on agenda item number 13 begins now. Are there any proponents? Please state your name and address. Andrew Ram, 17525 Gold Plaza. Chris Jones, 18731 Allen Street. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Grant? Yes. Gray? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. It's approved 7 to 0. Item number 14, House of Loom, 1012 South 10th Street. Request permission for a special designated license for a beer garden at 10th Street Bridge Properties, House of Loom, uh, on May 5th from 12 noon to 2 a.m. Music would end at 2 a.m. Public hearing on agenda item number 14 begins now. Are there any proponents? Proponent Ethan Bondelid, 1012 South 10th Street, Hasaloo. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Mr. Jerem. Yes, Ethan, before the meeting, you and I had a chance to um, meet and discuss this, correct? That's correct. And you advise that this will be your first SDL outside with outdoor music. That's correct. And you and I agreed that maybe on your first one that we we would go to midnight on the music because we want to see how this goes and what your neighbors think before we see whether any later times would be. That's correct. And that's something you've agreed yep, to do. Yep. That'd be fine. Okay. So um, I would to amend. move to amend the music ending at midnight. But the rest of it's the same. Right. Second. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Thank you. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Approved as amended 7 to 0. 
Uh, we'll take items 15, 17, 18 together. We'll take 16 separately. Th these are all uh, Kino locations. 15 is resolution to authorize Big Red uh, to have a satellite Kino location at Docks Bar and Grill at 4303 South 89th Street. 17 is the Rehab Lounge at 2616 South 120th, and 18 is Zen Room at 316 South 15th Street. Public hearing on agenda items number 15, 17, 18 begin now. Are there any proponents? Yes, Mr. President, members of the council, my name is Katrina Coffey. I'm Vice President of Marketing for Big Red Kino. We're located at 11248 John Gall Boulevard. I have with me today the owners of all three of these locations, and we'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Second. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Uh, they're all adopted 7 to 0. Now, item 16 is a resolution authorizing Big Red to add to operate a satellite keynote location at Parliament Pub, Midtown 1212 Harney Street, and we have a communications opposing. Public hearing on agenda item number 16 begins now. Are there any proponents? Yes, again, Katrina Coffey with Big Red, and we're located at 11248 John Galt Boulevard. I have with me today one of the owners, Mike Miller, and we'd be happy to answer any questions that you, that you have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? No. Thompson? No. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. It's adopted 5 to 2. Thank you. Consent agenda. Any member of the City Council may cause, cause an item placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed from the consent agenda shall be taken up by City Council immediately following the consent agenda in the order in which they were removed unless otherwise provided by the City Council Rules of Order. The public hearings on agenda items numbers 19 through 22 were held on April 3rd, 2012. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Are all passed 7 to 0. The public hearings on agenda items number 23 through 55 or today, if you wish to address the City Council regarding these items, please come to the microphone, indicate the agenda item number you wish to address, identify yourself by your name, address, who you represent, and if you are a proponent or opponent. Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Jerem Stothard. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. They're all adopted 7 to 0. Ordinance on fi final reading, item number 56, special ordinance delivering a special tax for sidewalks, SWR 2011-1. We have an amendment. Public hearing on agenda item number 56 begins now. Are there any proponents? Actually, it was held. Uh, like I said, public hearing on agenda item number 56 was held on April the 3rd, 2012. Here we have a motion. Mr. Jerem. Yes, um, this is a good project. This is the Barker Building at 15th uh, and No, Park. no, no, we're on 56. Oh, 56. Before that. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> we need a motion. I, to, I think it's in the air. <laughs> the amendment, yes. We have a motion and a second. Do we have to prove the amendment? Yes, we do, please. Um, that's, that, that's your, I mean, your motion is on the amendment. On the amendment. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. As amended? Mr. Jerem? No. Next next item. That's it. Okay. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Passed as amended 7 to 0. Now, item number, resolution item number 57, resolution that test Barker Building LLC tax and refinancing redevelopment project plan for the redevelopment project site located at 306 South 15th Street, contemplating the conversion and rehabilitation of the historic Barker Building into commercial office retail along, with fifth, along the 15th and Farnham Streets and 48 market rate apartments on the upper floors is hereby approved. We have an amendment. 
The public hearing on agenda item number 57 continues today. Are there any proponents? Good afternoon, members of the city council, Bridget Hadley, city planning. Um, as read before you, today is the uh, tax increment financing redevelopment project plan for the historic Barker building. Um, this particular project does propose to uh, convert and to rehabilitate a long-term vacant property, um, historic property, and to revitalize it, bring it back to life, make it productive, bring in 48 market rate uh, apartments as well as to uh, bring in commercial activity on the ground floor. Um, with that, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer those, I'd ask, but I'd also ask your approval. Bridget, is there any associated parking with this facility? There is no direct uh, parking, but there are arrangements with parking uh, garages in the nearby vicinity. I believe there's some arrangement with Hotel Deco and then um, a couple of other parking structures or surface lots in the very nearby vicinity. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Mr. Jerem? Yes, Second. Uh, the amendment. Thank you. Second. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. As amended? Second. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. It's adopted as amended 7 to 0. Item number 58, resolution uh, authorizing the professional service agreement between the city and NCS International for the year 2012 to provide payment uh, for fees and reimbursed expenses to provide service to identify, contract, contact, and recruit minority-owned businesses to locate in the north, northeast Omaha. Public hearing on agenda item number 58 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Motion approved. Second. Roll call. Jerem? No. Stothard? No. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Gurnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Mr. President? No. It's adopted four to three. Ordinance on second reading, item number 59. Ordinance to approve new article three of chapter 38 entitled pedicabs uh, to require a permit for the operation of a pedicab on certain streets in the area of the College World Series during the time and period of that event. There will be an amendment as well. Public hearing on agenda item number 59 begins now. It is. Are there any proponents? Good afternoon, Todd Schmatter, assistant. Chief Omaha Police Department, 505 South 15th Street. The proposed ordinance is a result of an agreement between the City of Omaha, our traffic commanders with the Police Department, and the citizens group representing the pedicab business in the community. I apologize for that. In short, uh, we feel it adequately protects the interests of the city, uh, our police department traffic flow and regulations that we have during the CWS and the pedicab businesses during that CWS period. I'll be available for questions or if you'd like me to summarize the ordinance, um, I am available. Thank you. Todd, was uh, everybody that wanted to participate, did they participate in the conversations? Yes, as far as I know, it was a comprehensive uh, back and forth negotiation process. The appointed head of the citizens group is here today, Mike Battershell and he was responsible for soliciting the participation of all the, the business community, anybody else who wanted to weigh in on the subject. As far as the city side, that was my responsibility and it was inclusive on that front. Okay, thank you. Are there any other proponents? Hello, my name is Mike Battershell, 2325 South 32nd Avenue. Uh, thank you all 
for allowing us to come and, and to your point is exactly why I'm here. The Greater Omaha Young Professionals helped spearhead a collaborative group of people that included Omaha Bikes, local business people, uh, Green Streets Bicycles, as well as Mode Shift Omaha uh, to have a comprehensive conversation about what active transportation looks like in our community and ensure that we worked with police uh, to make that happen. We'd like to commend uh, Deputy Chief Schmader for his uh, willingness to sit down with us when this came up to you all in December and Councilman Jerem for offering the layover so that we could have the conversation. We appreciate that because as a community it really helped us come together and realize uh, where we needed to be. So we're fully in support today. We've uh, met with the local businesses that would be involved in it to make sure that they understand what the permitting process is going to look like. Uh, and moving forward, we think that this is a, a good way to handle the first step uh, in this process. So thank you. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Mr. Jerome. Yes, I just want to thank uh, Deputy Chief Schmatter and Mike and all the groups that people who came and worked on this. Um, this is one of the things that when we hear some people say, well, we need to improve connectivity between the old market and NODO during the CWS, this is one of the tangible ways that we demonstrate that we're committed to improving that link. Uh, for, so people who are in NODO can explore and take advantage of the wonderful shopping and dining experiences in the old market and vice versa. Um, had this been my baby, I would have not been so uh, agreeable to the limit on the number of pedicabs that, that's been worked out because I would have probably wanted more. But um, in the end, I think this is a good compromise and will go a long way to um, addressing the, the police traffic concerns as well as the concerns of the people who are into different alternative transportation as well as um, improving that connectivity and private business owners. So um, I would move to approve uh, if today were the time, but I'm going to be told it won't. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. Um, I feel like the Yankees this season. I'm off to a rough start. It was bad. I had to watch them lose to Minnesota again last night. So. Mr. Gray. Yeah, I just have one question, and maybe Chris, maybe you can answer, or someone can answer it for me. I, I know that we had had some concerns about out of town, out of town. Um, those are, those, um, just if you can explain, you know, how that's going to work, or if that's going to be limited in some way, and how if, if there's going to be an effort to contact, or I don't know if you can contact, but just if you can just do a, a quick overview as to what the out of town, you know, uh, arrangement is going to be. Sure, Todd Schmutter, Omaha Police Department, 505 South 15. Uh, the maximum number of pedicabs allowed would be 25, with a limit of four per business, individual, or corporation. And we don't really anticipate 25 being operational at one time. There's an application period between March 1st and May 15th each year. Now, there is an amendment for this year to extend that to June 8th so that we can open that up and have everybody have an opportunity to apply. Uh, as far as the outside pedicab industry, that was one of our major concerns of uh, a number of entities coming in from the outside. And that's why we put the limit on 25 applications. Uh, with that being said, we really don't advertise. It's up to them when they come into another state, another venue to conduct business. They have to do the research on the laws, local and state, in order to be able to conduct their business there. Is, is it going to be the first 25, or is it going to be, or is there a, a portion that is set all, set aside for out of town guests, or what? How's that going to work? No, it is it is first come first serve. Okay. All right. <coughs> Just. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. We will take items 60 through 66. They're all amending specials, uh, as one public hearing. 60 is ordinance to amend uh, special levy ordinance 10132 by repealing the assessments on 2567 Woolworth Avenue, 5232 North 13th Street and 1402 Jane Street. 61 is to amend 10133. 62 is to amend 10134. 63 is to amend 10136. Uh, 64 is to amend 10137. 65 is to amend 10138. And 66 is to amend special ordinance 10139. 
The public hearing on agenda items 60 through 66 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Appeal rate bid rejections item number 67, Marsden, Marsden's Building Maintenance Appeals, the rejection of their bid of March 28 for janitorial service, community centers, ice arena, and nature center. Public hearing on agenda item number 67 begins now. Are there any proponents? Good afternoon. My name is Adam Dubuque, 18658 R Street. I'm the sales manager for Marsden Building Maintenance and the same person that uh, sent the email to all of you with our rejection letter. So I hope you received it and had time to review it. Um, I, I answer any questions about the nature of our rejection, um, if I can, if anyone has any. Thank you, sir. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. We have, we have an opponent. I'm Heather Tippy Pierce, Public Works, and I'm appearing on behalf of the Parks Department, and we just request your consideration and um, ask that you uphold the rejection. Public hearing is closed. Mr. Gray. Thank you, Mr. President. I make a motion that we, um, um, are we talking about rejecting the bids here, first of all, Heather? Is that what we're, is that what the part? To allow the appeal or is it to allow the appeal or, do, or reject the appeal? I believe, I, I believe that the motion was going to be to reject the appeal and direct the departments to rebid the project. Okay. That, that'll be my motion to reject the appeal and, and uh, submit uh, and to reject all bids and, and put it out to bid again. Second. Roll call. Okay, the, the motion is to deny the appeal, deny the appeal and direct the Parks Department to re reject, all reject, all, reject all bids and rebid the and project. Rebid the, am I allowed to say anything yeah. about that before a uh, motion if, is passed or votes are cast? I'll, I'll, I'll call it. Yeah. Okay. The only concern I had with that is, is why that may be in the best interest of the city because I'm sure you're going to re receive bids that are at our amount or below. Um, we feel that since our numbers have already been submitted, we were the low bidder by over $10,000, that now our cards are on the table and we're going to have less of an opportunity to earn this business. Uh, we, already, we already worked for the uh, city for the uh, Omaha Police Facilities, started that at the beginning of the year, been doing a very good job there, so we're familiar with the needs of the city. Um, but again, already having shown our price, we're concerned that we're going to have a lot of bidders that now come in under us that maybe don't know what they're doing, hoping they get the bid and they can figure it out as they go along. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Mr. Thompson. Thank you. Uh, now, council colleagues, now that we've heard that, uh, I'd like for city law to at least comment on what the gentleman just said, uh, Paul as Kratz. in advising the council. Paul Kratz, city attorney. Um, the gentleman is certainly correct that uh, the bids have been opened. They're available to anybody else who might bid in the future. Um, and that does create a, potentially creates a competitive disadvantage to um, Marsden building maintenance. Um, what you choose to do is up to the council, however. And if I could get Heather to come back up. Heather Tippy Pierce, Public Works. Heather, you asked us to uh, reject it all, but we need a rationale. The council needs a rationale, sure. and if you could provide some kind of statement. Well, um, we feel that the bid documents were quite clear. Um, we find that it's you know unfortunate that there was some miscommunication, but the bid documents themselves were clear and valid, and we believe that the rejection was done in good faith. Um, if the council so chooses to direct the Parks Department to reject all bids, that, that's your prerogative. Um, certainly the Parks Department has the ability to submit the same package for bid, change the package for bid. Uh, if they take that back as a project, they can amend the project in any way that they choose. Um, that's the department's discretion. Um, so that's, that's kind of our basis. It's consistent with the other appeals that we've seen with this particular program. Um, we've kind of really held to the precedent that 
the ordinance is the ordinance. It states what it states, and the bid documents are, are structured so that they very clearly state that uh, requirements of, of upholding um, the SEB ordinance. If you could just stay right there real quick. Sure. Uh, city Legal again, Paul Kratz. Yes, sir. Um, if we restructure the bid enough, does it become a new bid uh, in a way to where it isn't the same bid? Uh, it would be a new bid. Uh, it depends how it gets restructured as to whether or not there's any advantage from the prior bid opening. Um, it can be up to the department how they do it. Mm -hmm. And the department in this case, are we, are, we, are we saying parks or public works or both? This is parks, I believe. Isn't parks? It? Parks. Yeah. Can I have it's someone parks from parks? Brooke Bench, Acting Parks Director. Brooke, um, it kind of sounds like we're leaning towards rejecting the appeal and sending it back to you. But uh, is, is there enough about this, this uh, bid that you need to, to take a, a holistic look at it and perhaps uh, just make it a new bid? We certainly can do that. We can look at that. Did we have a, a motion and a second? Yes. Yeah. I'm done, Mr. President. Miss Ms. Stather. I, I Yes. I, I would like to make a substitute motion, and I would like to move to grant the appeal and limit um, Marsden Building Maintenance to sub resubmit Exhibit A, Form A only, which is what we discussed in pre-council. Sorry, yeah. Adam. Oh, sorry. Which is the, which is the only thing in dispute portion that was in question. So. My motion would be to grant the appeal and limit Marsden to resubmitting exhibit form A only. Uh, I believe our attorney is probably going to rule that that's total opposite of what this bid or what this motion is. The only way you could do that it would be to defeat the motion that's on the floor and then use that motion. You can't as do that as a substitute? No. Uh, Paul Kratz, city attorney, not as a substitute because it's totally opposite of the original motion. If it was a modification of the original mo motion, it would be an appropriate substitute motion. But so since you're going from rejecting to granting, uh, we have consistently ruled in the past that that's not an appropriate substitute motion. I think it's quite confusing because in pre-council this morning we talked about doing exactly what I just moved. Oh, uh, we did talk about that. But what's uh, on the agenda, what's on the floor right now, is a motion to reject. And you're suggesting a motion to mm -hmm. approve, and that's an opposite motion. So that's why it's not an appropriate substitute motion. Okay. So I'll withdraw it. Mr. Gray. Thank you, Mr. President. If I can have the owner from Marsden come back, please. Um, we have two choices here, and we chose one that we thought would be the most fair, because we've been this council has been fairly consistent when you don't supply the one document your bid is automatically rejected and I guess I I guess I'm asking you you know to a certain extent what would be your preference because the the choice the choice we have here is to either reject your bid out of hand because the document wasn't submitted or to reject all bids and start over and maybe have a different document that would not be the same as the one you bid on earlier, which probably would not, I mean, if they if they structure it appropriately, it would be a different bid. Sure. Well, obviously, we'd go with the second choice because then we would still have an opportunity to, to win this particular bid. Okay. bid. Um, however, I, I would like to state, though, that the only reason that document was not filled out is because we were given information from the buyer who admitted to the mistake um, uh, of what transpired. We, we understand that. Okay. We understand we're in the, we're in a bad situation. It hopefully, has been corrected, and we won't and we won't have to revisit this again. But the only way to keep you in the mix and to keep it fair would be to, to reject to reject the the uh, appeal and throw out all the bids and start over. That's the only way. We we can't have any time to maybe just fill out the the form as, as she mentioned a, again, and, and give it. We, the consistency here has been that if you don't supply the document and as Heather said before the 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 uh, the bid document was clear um, wasn't sure why there was a call made at all but the fact that a call was made and some erroneous information is out there I mean we can't 
get that back. So fair enough. Okay. You know that the, the, I, this would be the fairest way to do it. I think. Okay. All okay. right. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're done. Second. Roll call. There's. It would just restate what. what okay. We're... The motion to deny the appeal and direct the Parks Department to rebid the project. Roll call. Jerem. Yes. Stothard. No. Thompson. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Garnett. Yes. Gray. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. It's denied on a 6 1 vote. Pursuant to City Council Rule 70, the public hearing agenda item 68 shall, through 71 shall be held on the third reading. Uh, item 72 is ordinance to approve a property lease agreement uh, with the Bemis Center for Contemporary Arts uh, to lease commercial space located at 2416 Lake Street for a three year period. We need a motion to set the public hearing on third reading on May 1st. Motion to approve. Motion to set the motion to set, motion to set the uh, public, public hearing, hearing on third reading. Second. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Uh, 7 to 0. Pursuant to City Council Rule 7C, the public hearing agenda item 73 through 77 shall be held on the second reading. Item number 78 is motion by Council Member Gray to reconsider resolution 455 adopted on April 3rd, being the application of Downtown Food Mart at 318 South 16th Street for a package liquor license with a roll call on April 24th, 2012. We need a second. second. Item number 80. On the supplemental agenda, resolution that the purchase based on the quotes from Sid Dillon Wahoo for 40 year 2012 Chevy Capri police cruisers for the own police department and the purchase based upon the quotes from Anderson Ford Lincoln Mercury Mazda for five year 2012 Ford Interceptor police utility vehicles is hereby approved. Public hearing on agenda item number 80 begins now. Are there any proponents? Deputy Chief Davis with the Omaha Police Department, we're asking that you approve this resolution for the purchase of the cruisers. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Mark McCoy, City of Omaha Fleet Management, and I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mark. Are there any other proponents? Good afternoon. Uh, John Wells, President, Omaha Police Officers Association, 13445 Cryer Ave. Pam Spagrotella, Finance Director. Happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Mr. Festerson. Thanks, Mr. President. Um, I just seconded the motion, so obviously I'm supportive of the approach here and uh, appreciate the work. Police Department and Finance has done over the last six months, really, to crunch these numbers along with fleet management to try and construct a new approach for us to handling what is a great need for the department. And I think if you ask um, the interim chief or if you ask an officer on the street, they would say the two greatest, two of the greatest needs in the department are police officers on the street. And I was pleased to hear this morning that the recruit class the city council funded in May is now at 28 officers as we seek to get to the 800 level. And then secondly, a great need is uh, a method to replace an aging uh, cruiser fleet. And that's what's before us today. And what is before us today is a three-year lease of 45 vehicles uh, that presumably would be continued over the next few years uh, that does provide a uh, stability and, and ability to plan for those needs over that time frame and replace mini cruisers that are no longer uh, usable or that are suspect when it comes to repairs and, and being available to be on the street every day. And I think without a new approach, we're simply not going to be able to catch up with where we've been and where we need to be. And it's an approach that many major organizations have already taken, and, and many cities included, when it comes to public safety. Uh, just a couple questions, I think, for Ms. Spacartella. This is the first. Um, three-year lease we would see presumably with um, the ability to approve this on an ongoing basis in subsequent years uh, pending 
also an ordinance that would come later uh, that would fund the lease purchase bonds, correct? That's correct. And this is this item today is budgeted in 2012. Um, it's also being budgeted for in 2013 within the constructs of the budget you're forming right now. That is correct. 2014 is an additional cost above where we've been, but that's not saying much considering the fact that we've budgeted to purchase 16 cruisers this year, right? That's, that's correct. But that additional expense does get us to an amount to a level where we think we need to be and, and is sustainable and is buffeted by reductions in fleet maintenance costs and, and other reductions in costs that we'd other, otherwise be assuming. That's correct. And if in any year we decided to discontinue this approach, leasing, I mean, obviously the idea is to continue this approach so we have this ability to manage the fleet in a predictable fashion. But let's say in year three, we decided, hey, we don't want to lease anymore. There is an option to buy these cruisers as well, right? Yes, sir, there will be. And the whole idea is to have uh, a frontline cruiser fleet replaced within three years. Uh, but if at that point we, we didn't proceed, we're still talking about four-year-old cars that could be purchased for a lot less than we're purchasing now and would still be a lot newer than 15-year-old cars we have now on the street. That's correct. We talked this morning a little bit. You mentioned um, if we proceed with this agreement, the, the timeliness is you're trying to piggyback on a state contract, which is April 30th, has April 30th deadline, right? That is correct. And so if we do that, um, we think that we could have these 45 cruisers, 40 cruisers and five uh, SUVs on the street by December, end of this year, basically. Yes, that's correct. Um, and we all know we're in, the per we're in the process of going through camera replacement in all these cars, so presumably all the new cameras would also go in these new vehicles, and that's been a complimentary effort. That's correct. For all these reasons, I'm sure there'll be, some, there'll be some more comments today, but for all those reasons, I'm supportive of this and, and hope it passes today. And thank you for your work. Thank you. Ms. Stafford. Thank you. Um, Pam, you can come back up because I'll ask you a few more questions. Sure. But this is something we've all been talking about for some time. And um, I appreciate all the work that you've done on it. I know that there's there's always seems to be more questions popping up. So I just had a few more to ask you today. Um, it is a big commitment, though. And you I know it. you've agreed to that. And mm -hmm. there's a big price tag. And when once we commit to it, um, we really need to commit to funding it, too. Yes. And this is a multi-year lease, yes. which we, you just talked about. So it's a three-year. So we will be committed to the three years. Yes, that's correct. And then, as Pete said, that at the end of it, if somehow we find out that it's not working, we have the option to get out of that three-year. That's correct. And But if we decide to go on, we will be committed to another three-year and there they're on, right? Yes, that's correct. And, and I, you know, my, my hesitation all along, um, well, first of all, let me say I do support the leasing approach. I, I, I think that's the only approach that we could take. I mean, I think that's pretty much all our only option. Um, my hesitation all along has been, it, it worries me that it may limit the flexibility of future city councils to make wise financial decisions for the city um, in a few years if perhaps this annual expense may not be in the best interest of the city due to financial considerations at that time, we would still be uh, obligated to fund it if we were still in that three-year cycle. So that concerns me some, because we never know what the financial right. situ situation will be. So I think we, we all agree that there's a need. I, I think we all agree that, that there is probably not a lot of other options, but my concerns will always be that we don't know, we can't predict what the financial situation will be, and we have to commit to this. But So it would be a three-year cycle, and after that three-year, if we just felt like financially we could not keep up with this $2 million a year price tag, because even though there's a cost savings, there still will be the price, we do have an option to get out of the yes. lease. You would, you would not renew the, the lease after the end of those three years. Okay. Um, and the the estimated repair cost that we would be saving that you have talked about um, an about a two hundred and twenty thousand dollar savings in repair and maintenance and and along with the, that includes a salvage. No, the, that's uh, a little confusing. Uh, okay. Still. So how I prepared the the analysis is we're phasing in the savings as the age of the fleet decreases. 
And so the first year, you'll, we anticipated approximately a third of the savings would come in. Next year is two thirds. And then the, the third year, we would be realizing the full savings. And that full savings is approximately 600,000. I don't have my sheet in front of me, of which 180,000 represents an increase in the salvage values on the purchase and sale of the, of the vehicles. And then the 400,000 in savings and repairs and maintenance costs. Okay. And you know, I know you've explained this to us before, sure. but I just think it, it's important now that if anyone in the public is watching, that they really hear it from you and understand. Okay. Um, the other thing I would like to ask you, though, um, to publicly explain is, to me, this seems like a, a fairly aggressive approach. 45 vehicles a year for three years, mm -hmm. that's pretty much replacing the whole front line. Um, did you give some consideration, or can you just talk to us a little bit about taking a less aggressive approach, perhaps a more conservative approach, and buying less over a longer period of time with a lease. Did you examine that and did you come up with this is the best scenario that you find? We did take a look at that. It was a joint effort between police, fleet maintenance, and finance. And what we looked at was we looked at our vehicles from the perspective of how old they were and the mileage that they had on them. And we looked for a natural breaking point, and we found that breaking point to be at about the 100,000, 120,000 mile mark. And so we designed the replacement vehicles knowing that what the average miles per vehicle we place on a frontline cruiser and how many miles per vehicle we place on the spares. And we came up with the determination that we needed to change over approximately one fourth of our fleet every year. And so we would buy 45 vehicles each year under this lease program based upon that analysis. Okay, and in the choice of the vehicle, that you chose with this lease was made by the group that worked together, right? That's correct. Okay. Um, were as far there as the make and model, or as far as the number of miles? The make and model. That actually was mainly fleet maintenance. Fleet maintenance and police, yeah. and so finance really didn't have any input on that. And maybe I should ask Mark this a, a last sure. question, just about um, your maintenance costs. Just just review if you could just briefly what our average yearly repair and maintenance costs are right now with our aging fleet. Well, it, it, it varies. It depends on the the uh, if the frontline vehicles, spare you have to vehicles. Say your name and address. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Mark McCoy, City of Omaha Fleet Management. But. Uh, we're looking at a hundred thousand dollars for uh, for frontline vehicles with uh, under a hundred thousand miles on it. Four hundred thousand that jumps up to four hundred thousand when you get on vehicles that have over a hundred thousand miles on it. Um, you had a hundred and fifty thousand for for the spare vehicles. We broke all the vehicles down into pools and looked at them in individual pools so we could properly analyze that. But um, all total, that's where it comes up with the six hundred thousand dollar number. Annually. Annually. Okay. Excuse me. That's the savings. Eight eighty is the current expenditure. That's what I was asking. Yeah, I'm sorry. Eight, eight to eight hundred thousand is all total. All the the spares, the front line, the the uh, SRO school resource officer calls. All the cars put it into one pool. And I think, and and last thing I want you to to explain too is because um, I've had some questions from cons some constituents, there is obviously a lot of people, a lot of employees working if we're doing this much maintenance. Is this going to eliminate any employees? Uh, over the years, possibly. I mean, we could we could look at that through attrition, um, but right now uh, we're, we're focusing on getting these cars repaired and uh, we're sending some of the repairs outside now to get done because we have so many repairs in-house that we can't keep up with the, the number of repairs so uh, we could possibly bring some of those repairs back in-house but you know if we got onto a plan where we're five six years down the road yeah that's definitely something we'll we'll be looking at all right thank you mr thompson thank you mr president it's mr wells who come up John Wells, President of Omaha Police Officers Association. One John, I want to start off by crimes. saying uh, thanks for the job that you guys do. And I know over the years, um, you know, we've been at odds on a few things, but I want you to know that I really appreciate what you do for the city and that public safety is number one. I'd like to just offer that, first of all. I appreciate but Second that. of all, Thank you. over the years, uh, we've, we've had, I've had conversations with the e-board 
and back and forth, many, many years, many conversations. And those conversations usually are ended up into four different categories, one being regular salary for what you do, uh, second, retirement and benefits and pension issues, number three, the safety of officers, making sure that the officer is not put in harm's way. And then uh, the fourth and broader one being making sure that we give you what you need to, to do the service that you have to provide. And if I'm correct, and you, you correct me if, if, if I'm not, um, you've always said, uh, at least to me and, and Gary, I know, um, when it comes to the things that you have to do your job and you have to be safe, let's make sure that we support you on those things, but when it comes to other things, negotiations for salaries and benefits, those are the things that we can talk back and forth and have some give and, give and take on. Is that correct? Um, I, I think everything to a certain extent is negotiable, but as far as the standpoint from my membership, probably one of the key issues as far as the ability to do their job and as far as uh, overall morale is the equipment and cruisers being number one in that area. And then also uh, not putting you in an unsafe position, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so um, I just wanted to make sure that that is sort of a, a general view of, of the rank and file. Um, thank you very much. And I'd like to turn to my colleagues and say that uh, you've heard me say many times before that I've, I've asked the, the union to step up and to reinvent themselves, but that had to do with uh, uh, negotiation issues having to do with, with pensions and stuff like that. And maybe they did step up and maybe they didn't, but when it's our time to step up, we have to do what we have to do, and two wrongs don't make a right. And um, if the next negotiation cycle comes around and we're asking them to, to take uh, less benefit or pay more in, in insurance or et cetera, et cetera, and they look back on us and say, well, you wouldn't even give us safe cars. So we have to be careful that the same thing that we're asking of other people that we're willing to do ourselves. And I think this is a safety issue and it's an issue of uh, having, having them perform their job. I also believe that uh, there are some individuals, not all, but there are some individuals that have magical thinking and they think, well, all taxes are bad or I want the best services, but I'm not gonna pay for it. That's just not realistic, folks. That, I mean, we're playing games when we do that. So there is such a thing as bad expenditures and there's good expenditures. And I believe that um, uh, the proper research on this has been done and I believe it's a good, good expenditure. So that's my editorial. Mr. Jerem. Yes, um, Chief Baker, would you come up? David Baker, Interim Chief, Omaha Police Department, 505 South 15th Street. And before I called you up, I had a chance to talk to you off the mic. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And um, have you taken a look at the details and the financial costs and, and the needs of your department in terms of your fleet and the officer's safety and the mission that you ask them daily to perform? Yes, I have. I do feel that this this particular uh, purchase is critical to the operations of the police department. I want to thank Councilman Thompson for your remarks just a moment ago. I think it's critical for the safety of our officers. I could regale the council with anecdotal evidence and, and other statistical even evidence of our cars and, and how these issues have affected operations over the years up to and including having officers in certain positions such as our SROs having to use their own private vehicles in the course of their work in order to get the job done but the need truly is critical for our department it's critical for the safety of our officers and I would urge a council strongly to go ahead and do this and I think most of you who know me and, and know the way the department works understand that we are willing to work within and we understand the constraints of, of budgets. We understand the constraints of, uh, of the amount of taxes coming in and, and the issues of balance both sides, but truly this is a critical need of the department. And I would urge you to go ahead and support this measure in its entirety at this point. In, including looking at the number in terms of the recommended amount per annual purchase lease being 45 versus 30 or something less than 45, is that also mission critical to effectively carry out 
the job that you ask your officers to do on a daily basis? Yes, it really is, and that's one of the ways that we wound up getting in the position that we're in today, is going ahead and, and, and cutting them back and, and doing less and, and less every year, and, and when we start going through that, we're not replacing these cars that we need to that are a critical need in a fast and most efficient manner. Not only we've talked about the cost and maintenance that we would save and, and other things non-monetarily, I'm concerned for the safe operation of these cars as well. We got in this position by downgrading our purchases over the years, by purchasing fewer when it was convenient for us to do this. And now we're at a, a stage in this process where we really need to be aggressive in order to fix those, those if you will, mistakes or, or the needs that we've had in the past to kind of kick the scan down the road. We're at the end of the road now. And st some of these cruisers are are really spending a lot of time down. We're having problems with loose front ends, with brakes, and with other critical systems in some of these cars as they approach 200,000 miles. Those are safety issues for your police officers. Thank you for that. Um, one of the things before I call uh, Officer Wells up, I wanted to make a note is, in, and that's my own personal observations. I know I'm not the only council member that's done ride-alongs with the police, and I've never mentioned to the officer who's been driving me that I look at the mileage when I get in. I guess I'm tipping my hat now that, or that that's one of the things I do. And I seem to recall the vehicle having either 137,000 miles or 173,000. I, was, I was looking over from the side, so I may have that inverted, but, you know, I, the thought occurred to me, you know, I'm, I'm pretty frugal. I've got a neighbor here in the audience today who can attest to the fact that I keep cars for a long time. I, I just wear them out. And I had one for 14 years. And it got to the point where I, would, I didn't feel comfortable with my wife or daughter driving that thing on a daily basis. Why in the world would I ask police officers to put their lives, their own safety on the line, let alone the safety of the citizens they swear to serve and protect and trying to maybe be compromised and getting the response to someone in need who's calling on them. Whether that car breaks down, the trans go buy a certified transmission. I have one by my office. It seems like there's always two or three police cruisers in there. Uh, and there are these old rattle buckets that we wouldn't drive. And um, so to me, when I hear the chief saying what he's saying, and been a part of a management team the past several years that's managed through some really challenging budgetary times when the, the city's been trying to manage its way through budget shortfalls early on in our, this council's term in the tens of millions of dollars. The things that they've done to work within the limited means that we've given them to do their job, and here they are essentially politely getting as close to a bag as you can to saying, we need this stuff. Um, and then you, you hear about the exhaustive review they, they've done over the last several months. Um, heck, they even have their own off-duty police officers repairing their department headquarters to try to save money. Um, to me, that, that goes and speaks miles and miles as to how important and how needed this is. But if that's not enough for you, it's just like that 14-year-old car I got rid of. The annual maintenance costs to keep it going, and my neighbor's laughing because he knows, we used, you know, fence talk. I was pouring money into that thing, it seemed like monthly. So it's, there's no surprise to me that we're spending $880,000 a year on, on keeping these jalopies going right now. I mean, that's unacceptable. That's just throwing good money after bad. And I think our constituents expect us to, to not waste their money in that regard. And in knowing what I know about how hard you work with your team to, to stretch your resources, and the department officers stepping up to pitch in to repair their own headquarters, to me is true testament that you wouldn't be asking for this if it weren't absolutely critical to carrying out your mission. So um, thank you, Chief. Officer Wells, would you like to come up and, and tell me, I mean, is your assessment any different with terms of the critical nature of the need for these replacements and this amount over no, this time? No, I think the Chief summed it up uh, 
pretty succinctly um, just how desperate we are in the, for these cruisers. Um, we've been grumbling about it for basically the last five to ten years, especially the last five years, as the overall age of the fleet has increased and the miles have increased, and it's it's probably the number one complaint I hear from officers. Would Thank you. you. Sir John Wells, President, Omaha POA. But if if that's still not enough to convince any last holdouts out there, as Council Member Grenant says in TV land, to believe how this is important. I hope you heard what Dr. Thompson said when he said, you know, we can disagree about a lot of things, but he would hope we would never disagree about giving those we task with the responsibility to do one of the most important functions of city government, the essential tools they need to carry out that task. And right now, we have our chief saying he needs this, our head of the union saying we need this, the fleet maintenance director and finance director, and all the other bean counters that have looked at this saying that this is a wise, prudent decision to make to get achieve the greatest savings possible. To me, it's overwhelmingly obvious that this is something that's not only needed, but required of us. And so, in light of all that, Dr. Thompson's quote that I paraphrase to me really sums it up. And we hear these nightmare stories from some of the troops that we've sent overseas not equipped properly with what they've needed to do their job. You know, thank God we haven't had the, the story here of a cruiser that stalled or broke down and caused something tragic to one of our officers. And it's only been through through extraordinarily expensive fleet maintenance to keep this ragtag fleet patched up and band-aid to keep it going that, and maybe the grace of God watching out over these officers, that we haven't had a crisis like this in this city. And I think the more we stretch this out and delay this decision, the more painful financially it's going to get and the more we're playing with danger with the lives of our officers and the people who have called them for help. And in just my neighborhood, over the Sunday into Monday, we had two within a few blocks of my house, ordinarily quiet place to live, um, of a domestic violence uh, incident. Somehow some guy dumped a woman that he had beaten out of her car just on, across the street from my house. And when the police responded, they literally responded, looked at these cars, and it's like, how in the world do they do their job? I mean, we're asking them to operate with stuff we would never even put our own families into. So I'd ask for your support uh, on this motion. I want to thank you for your, your time here today. And Mr. McCoy and Pam, I don't know who else was on your team studying this. But thank you, because you have looked at this from every angle conceivable in terms of the cost, the benefits, everything, and the time you put in, and the questions that have been peppered at you. Um, and, I'm, and they're all well-intentioned, I might add. They're all legitimate, well-intentioned questions. But you have gone above and beyond to show why this is necessary, the savings that it achieves, and the benefits long term we will re reap from this. But by the way, uh, Councilman uh, Jerem, those those 14 year old cars that are barely making it down the street, we we call those hoopties. <laughs> They're hoopties. Yeah, from the hood. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have one. <laughs> Mr. McCoy, could you return to the podium, please? Mark McCoy, City of Omaha Fleet Management. And as uh, what, what is your position with the City of Omaha specifically? Uh, I'm the Equipment Services Manager for City of Omaha. So you're in charge of the police, all vehicles. Yeah, correct. police, fire, public works, 2,650 vehicles, roughly. Okay. In in your opinion, are we placing police officers in vehicles today that are in an unsafe condition? Um, unsafe condition. 
we do everything we can to ensure that they are not in an unsafe vehicle, but when you have That's a, a yes or no answer I'm looking for. <laughs> um, yes, they're, they're unsafe and they shouldn't be on the streets, or no, they're in a safe working condition. I would say that they're in a safe working condition. When, we, when we're done with them, when they leave our shop, they're in a safe working condition. But 10 minutes There's been from a lot now, of emotion here stated today about the condition of your vehicles. But I agree. I'm, I'm very concerned that if we're putting people on the streets in unsafe vehicles that could be causing accidents, I mean, that's something that we as a body here need to know okay. well, immediately. I, uh, we can do whatever it takes to make sure that that vehicle is safe, but when that vehicle has 200,000 miles on it, the chances are it becoming unsafe is a lot more, a uh, lot better chances of it than, than a vehicle with 50,000 miles on it. So I, I understand. I, I, I understand. So uh, I would nothing say... Nothing is leaving... Nothing, we're not putting anybody on the street in an unsafe vehicle, correct? There may be ones out there that are unsafe right now because but they have a lot of miles on them, but if they come the in best of your, But to the best of your ability, the answer is no, correct? Correct. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, I do want to make a distinction between unsafe vehicles and gambling with officer safety. Those two things are separate. I, I understand. Okay. But, Mr. Gray. Yes, sir. For, um, thank you, Mr. President. First, let me call the chief up, if I would, please. Chief, you, you, you work very closely with, with individuals when they're out on the street and so forth, um, as do I, and I'm going to comment on that in a minute myself, but um, to, to the President's question, uh, I'm, I'm going to pose that same question to you. Are we putting people in unsafe vehicles? Uh, first of all, I want to state my gratitude and my respect for Mr. McCoy's uh, operation down there and his mechanics. They work very hard to make our vehicles safe when they roll out. But as he said, I mean, nearly all you need to do is look at the maintenance records and how quickly they return for problems like brakes, like front ends, like transmissions and other things that they come back in again. Unfortunately, an older car like that is more prone to failure and they become unsafe sooner on the street. You ask him if he puts any unsafe vehicles back on the street. I don't believe any of us would take an unsafe vehicle from him in a repaired condition. Now, the other side of that coin might be, do we bring any unsafe vehicles into him that we've been driving on the street? And the answer to that would be yes. And that's why you bring them in. That's why we bring them in. Right. And we bring them in very frequently. Um, thank you, Chief. And, and that's all I, I was... I was just going to, well, my intent was to call the question, but the Vice President wants to make a few comments, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, um, acquiesce and let him make a few statements, but I want to make a few closing statements, first of all, myself. First of all, I, th this is um, the reason why I made the motion. It, the motion was aggressive because this package is aggressive and this package needs to be aggressive. Uh, we have done, for far too long, we have piecemealed Trying to put car, trying to put police officers, police vehicles on the street, and we need to be consistent, and we need to put a plan in place that genuinely works, and genuinely has some sort of effort, uh, or some sort of plan at some cost savings at some point. So I believe that the finance department, along with Mr. McCoy and others, have done that. Um, but more importantly, I think, um, and I've been on the street. As you as you know, Chief, and in, in, in a lot of instances at, at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning when uh, officers are out on the street, and I remember one specific police officer who bemoaned the fact that, you know, he had just gotten that car out of, out of, uh, out of the maintenance shop, and it's already doing a HEMI job on the front end. So, you know, it hadn't been out on the street, you know, for less than less than two hours and it was already having issues. So um, I think we need to be aggressive about it. Um, I am supportive of this effort. I'm supportive of the aggressive nature of this and I'm supportive of what I think is going to be the cost savings at the end of it. But more importantly, we have an obligation to our officers and we have an obligation to our citizens to provide fast, effective service and we, we have an obligation to our officers to make sure that that fast, effective service is done in a safe manner. And so that's the reason I'm supportive of this. And as I said, I would call the question, but my vice president has a few things to say, so I will, I will yield the mic to him. But uh, I will also echo the comments of, uh, 
uh, Dr. Thompson, this, this is an expense that we need to engage in. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Goodhand. As a former Hoopties driver, <laughs> I think it, 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 it saddens me to go back and think that our taxi fleet has a better maintenance program in this city than our police cruisers do. And this goes, this isn't six months old, this isn't one year, this isn't 10 years, this isn't 12 years. I remember in my other life, uh, after graduating from the police academy and getting into my first cruiser in 1969, and sticking my foot through the floorboard of a 65 Ford. We had problems back then. And I tried to improve it. They worked at it. I did my service. I tried to keep the cars that I had uh, under my control the best that I could. I was very proud of the fact that as a supervisor and as my supervisor car rotated into a district car then into a fleet there were guys out there that wanted it because they knew that I took care of my car but it did come at an expense and I couldn't agree more with the numbers that have been presented to us I would appeal to my colleagues that have the numbers concerns Please don't put your foot through that rusty floorboard. Thank you. Call the question. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Uh, I just have a final statement I'd like to make here very briefly. But, and Didn't give a second. While I, while I probably uh, could support some type of a lease purchase arrangement on a test basis, and we have to remember, that's what we're talking about here today. This is the city of Omaha's entry into that type of, of arrangement. Uh, and, and I do like the structure that a lease or arrangement does provide because part of the issue that we've been talking about here today is over the past 10 years, we've been all over the charts as far as how many vehicles we've actually replaced. But we've averaged about 22 a year, 20 vehicles a year in the past 10 years. But, but I believe what we have before us today is a little too aggressive and too costly at 45 cars a year. I would prefer the approach to start with a lesser number of vehicles and if success is shown with reduced maintenance and cost savings that we could, should realize in reduced maintenance, we would then increase the number of vehicles if necessary in later lease arrangements. And with that, do we have a motion and a second, Mr. Clerk? Yes. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Gurnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Mr. President? No. It's adopted on a 6-1 vote. Item number 81, resolution that the purchase based upon the proposal for turnkey mobile uh, for the purchase of laptop, computers, monitors, and associated monitoring equipment for the Omaha Police Department is hereby approved. Public hearing on agenda item number 81 begins today. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Ms. Dother. Yes, I, I, I just think uh, Deputy Chief Davis, if you could come down, I, I think this is just important to clarify what this is. <coughs> Deputy Chief Davis, Omaha Police Department. All right, and, and this is a purchase, $320,000, but it is for laptops. Can you, re, can you uh, just go over what? We currently have replacing. 175 laptops in our fleet. It's now time to replace them as they become five to six years old. Um, the, we're going to replace the oldest model first, and I believe that would be 67 of them. And this, these are in the cruisers? 
Yes, these are cruiser laptops. Okay, correct. but this really doesn't have anything to do with the the uh, lease plan that we just approved. Otherwise, this isn't going to be a annual fee that we're going to have to pay. That would be correct. This is our regular maintenance uh, replacement schedule for the laptop computers in the cruisers, regardless of the lease purchase agreement. All right, all right. And, and how many did you say this would purchase? This is going to purchase, uh, it's going to replace 67 of the older CF-29s that we have. So now we will only have, once we purchase these, we'll have two models of laptops in the cruisers. Okay. So for a total of 175. All right. All right, thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. it, thank you. Sure. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Yeah. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. It's adopted 7 to 0. We'll take items 82, 83, and 84 together. They're all appointments. 82 is resolution the appointment of Fred Clark to be a member of the Downtown Business Improvement District Area Board, is hereby confirmed. 83 is the appointment of John Hargis uh, as a member of the Landmarks Heritage Preservation Commission. And 84 is the appointment uh, by Brian Fairham uh, as a general public member of the Plumbing Board, is hereby confirmed. Uh, public hearing on agenda items number 82, 83, 84 begin now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. They're all adopted 7 to 0. Pursuant to City Council Rule 70, agenda item number 85. She will lay it over two weeks for publication of public hearing. Second. Roll call. Jerem, yes. Stothard, yes. Thompson, yes. Festerson, yes. Garnett, yes. Gray, yes. Mr. President. Yes. 321.